Hello everyone, I'm Rui Sheng from Huawei Media Innovation Lab. I'm very glad to attend our O3D Con and share my achievements here. We know that water system is always an important part for graphic engines. However, in O3DE, it is temporarily missing. So what I've been trying to do is to build and improve the water system in O3DE. I've been working on this topic for a couple of months. These are the 10 features which I think may improve the appearance of the water. I will follow this outline and go in detail one by one. In the beginning, let's take an overview video of current water system. This is a scene with a simple pool. There is a directional sunlight and seven lights with different types. Besides, I placed two shader balls to make the effect more visible. One advanced feature of the water system is the half water surface rendering, which is totally physically based. It has a great appearance, right? Then we go below the water surface and have a look of underwater post-processing and come to the caustics. In this water system, caustics is also physically based. The shape of caustics is decided by the wave shape and the incoming directional light as is shown in the video. When the camera is above the water, the effect is the same. Next, let's have a look of another scene which contains terrain and water. This time, the waves are moving more violently. Look around and we can find that the render result looks pretty good when the camera is against the sun. Then follow the camera and move just above water in two directions as if we are flying birds. Well, now it's time to describe the details of the water system. The wave shape is the first point. If there is no wave, the water will be a mirror. Change the wave type to single Gerstner and we can see a moving wave similar to sine waveform. Adjust the parameters list in the panel and we can clearly see how they influence the wave shape. The main feature of Gerstner wave is that its crests will be sharper. Parameters other than sharpness are normal waveform parameters, and I will fast forward with you here. When the wave type comes to multi Gerstner, which means the final wave is combined with several base waves, the result appears to be more random. This panel provides the adjustment for wave num and total scalar, so set the proper value for each parameter and we can get the expected wave shape. Here I place the signature of Dresner wave used in this water system. Its inputs are the five parameters and it outputs the position offset and the corresponding normal. However, simply add those base waves is not enough, and it will cause many artifacts. One difference between multi Gerstner wave and the real world is the high frequency component. To make up for this, the water system allows users to add a normal map and adjust its scalar. And for each base Gerstner wave, it needs extra conditions. Waves with high frequency does not need to be performed as wave shape, just count it in normal is enough. In implementation, lambda, which means wave length, its reciprocal is used to represent the frequency. It looks strange in single wave, but it's quite helpful in combined waves. To explain in detail, the dynamic wave is implemented using vertex shader. Thus, the actual shape in render result is not smooth surface. The normal and other properties can be interpolated and looks continuous, but the shapes cannot. 
The higher the frequency of the wave, the more obvious the phenomenon is. So, as the figure shown, separate the base waves and only use those with low frequency to calculate the wave position. More vividly, as is shown in this figure, the wave mesh differs from the wave curve when it has a high frequency. So we should not add those waves into vertex shader. Then we come to the core rendering method. For this water system, I use ray tracing to calculate reflection and refraction. When shading one pixel on the water surface, trace along the reflect direction and refract direction and get the direct shading result of these two points. For the ray which goes under the water, its result need to be blended with the water color. After tracing and getting the result of reflection and refraction, I use Fresnel formula to blend them. In this way, we can get the perfect refraction result as is shown in the video. As for those point and area lights, retracing is not needed at all. Do the shading just as standard PBR is enough. Here I place the procedure code for the shading. It is not complicated in principle. Because only two tracing operation is needed for one pixel, the performance is not affect much. On rendering water surface, we also need to consider about the foam. There are usually three types of foam, which are wave tip foam, contact foam, and interact foam. For this water system, I have implemented the contact foam. As we can see, the contact foam appears where the water contact with other objects in real time. Contact or not is decided by view depth difference between water and other objects. On the right is the foam texture. It is a three-layer noise texture. Blend the three layers with different depth-based method and we can get the final foam result. Another feature is the subsurface scattering. However, it is not physically based. The reason why subsurface scattering have to be added is shown in the video. Water without this feature looks unreal. In fact, when we look towards the sunlight, the water rendering result should be a little brighter. In this situation, the light goes into the water and then scatter out and then enter the camera or eye. So the effect varies with the direction of the sunlight. Besides, this feature is evident when the amplitude of water wave is large, for its normal changes greatly. Here I place the pursuit code for this feature. The result is calculated using light direction, view direction, and normal. Next, underwater rendering is a quite important part of water system. When the camera is below the water surface, the object performs quite different. For a pixel on these objects, the incoming light is scattered and the reflect light will be scattered either. Thus, we need a new shading calculation and some post-processing. Considering the incoming light, it is refracted when it goes through the water surface, so the light direction needs to be modified. Besides, the light color should be blended with the water color based on the depth of current pixel. After these two steps, we can do the shading as usual. Then the last step, after getting the shading result, we should blend it with water color based on view depth. However, the skybox illumination is not changed. It does not influence the result a lot. Now we come to the first advanced feature, the half-water surface rendering. The underwater post-processing disappears smoothly at the water surface. Do not think it as a simple linear blending. In fact, it's totally physically based. The render result is calculated by tracing the reflect direction and refract direction in screen space. Here, let me show why this boundary appears to be like this. 
The yellow curve around the right represents the water surface. The y-axis represents the camera lens. These two lines split the space into three parts. The formation of the water surface curve is due to the infiltration phenomenon, or surface tension of water exactly. Have a look at those black rays. The lower ray goes higher after refraction or reflection. Thus, it will cause the result somehow looks like reflection in the mirror. But how to get the curve expression? By force analysis, we can derive a second-order differential equation, solve it, and the result is placed here. Draw the expression using online tools and the curve is on the right. OK, now all inputs are known. Just do the shading and get the result. The second advanced feature is the physically based caustics. Caustics is the result of dynamic wave shape and light refraction. Here I change the sunlight direction, and the caustic shape varies synchronously. When the light is close to vertical line, the caustics looks like honeycomb. Conversely, the caustics looks like cloth drip. I have experimented it many times in the swimming pool and found it's the same in real world. As to how it was implemented, I used computer shader to get the caustic texture. This method is somehow like equidistant sampling. The density of light above the water is uniform distributed. After refraction, the light reaches the bottom and has a horizontal offset. The texture accumulates the points after offset. This forward approach can be done with multi-thread, thus improve the performance. Then let's go on. The interaction with wind. The wind in O3DE is developed by one of my colleague, Jianwen. Turn on the switch in the panel, and we can adjust the wind vector. The wave goes towards the wind direction, and the speed is influenced by wind speed synchronously. When calculating the effects, add the time factor to water vertex position. This factor should not be linear. In fact, the wind has disturbance from time to time. So for a time factor, I add sine disturbance based on wind speed and vertex position. The last feature, interaction with terrain system. In other engine, this may not be a single feature to be present. However, I use retracing to do the rendering and the trace function does not report a hit point with terrain. This leads to the result of no terrain can be seen under the water. To solve this problem, I provide a rendering mode with no retracing and add screen space refraction to it. The implementation is similar to those water rendering approach in other engines. Use the rendering result without water as input and blend with watercolor based on view depth difference. The effect that mainly affect by using this approach is the reflection. The water can only reflect the sky box, which cannot give a perfect appearance. That's all for my presentation. Thank you.